531. We are now well, a little more than 80 days away until Election Day between now and then. If you haven't heard it enough, you're going to hear a lot about polling. And what should you really look for in a poll? And can you trust them? Scripps News is Joe St. George breaks down what you need to know. Let's start by explaining how a poll typically gets done. Media companies, nonprofits, academic institutions, and of course campaigns will often pay a professional firm to conduct a poll. Polls can cost thousands or in some cases tens of thousands of dollars. They can be conducted on the phone like a landline or by calling cell phones. Polls are increasingly using the internet to reach people too. Polls are used to be able to, be able to count on uh, a lot of people responding to polls. That's changed. Uh, we now see less of a response rate. Professor Andy Crosby studies how polls are conducted at the University of California, Riverside. What is his advice to people wanting to know more about polling? He says familiarize yourself with more than just the headline. Take, for instance, this poll. The headline shows Vice President Harris leading former President Trump on the issue of the economy. But note the margin of error. It's often listed much smaller than this on screen. The margin of error of plus or minus 3.1 percent means it's mathematically possible that Trump is actually leading. A margin of error exists in every poll because pollsters aren't surveying every American. 3% is common, 5%, 6% margin of error, then you, you know, you're less less confident in those results. Another big number to look for is the sample size. How many people were actually surveyed? Crosby says it may not always be listed on a fancy graphic. For this Harris Trump poll by the Financial Times and the University of Michigan, you'll find it on the specific poll's full report listed online. Many pollsters publish a lengthy PDF document with more detailed information about their poll. Here it is listed in the top right corner. I see a thousand uh, people on this poll, approximately a thousand people. That's good. Anything less than that, Crosby says, should be viewed with a bit more skepticism. Speaking of skepticism, always be on the lookout for companies who have worked on the poll. If you see a poll that's only funded by a Democratic pollster or only by a Republican pollster, you may say, you know, Maybe we want to use some caution on that. Polls that randomly select people are always the best, Crosby says, and diversity is important too. Confirming if a poll is legit or not, though, isn't always easy. To find out how the New York Times and Siena College recently conducted their poll, you have to scroll all the way to the bottom of a very lengthy data document. Joe St. George, Scripps News, Washington.